Hi, my name is uh, Eddie Carnaby, cardiology fellow at University of Miami. I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Uh, Sean Smithson uh, from Methodist Hospital at Houston uh, for this latest edition of the late breaking trial, for, for this latest edition of the Fits on the Go blog. Uh, we're joined by Dr. Van Meekley from Erasmus Medical Center uh, from the Le Netherlands. Um, we're here to discuss the late breaking trial, the Zeus. Um, uh, Dr. Valmingli, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. uh, can you please uh, summarize to us uh, the results and the trial design of the, uh, of the trial? Sure, it's a pleasure. In the zoo study, we were randomizing patients who were qualifying for being not good DS candidates to Bermetla stent, which is what uh, they would anyhow receive as a standard of care, with uh, compared to a, a specific type of DS, which is called Endeavor Sprint Zotrolomus Elutic stent. And we were going for a superiority endpoint, which was MACE rate at one year. And actually, we have assumed in our original calculation that Endeavor stent would prove superior to bare metal stent at one year. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, as part of the trial, um, the patient characteristics, we're wondering what makes a patient an uncertain candidate for for a drug eluting stent? Thank you. This is, of course, a key question because we didn't want to do the boring study stent A versus stent B. We really wanted to do something new, and that's why we have addressed a unique patient population which has been so far systematically excluded from randomized control studies, namely patient presented with uh, specific eye bleeding risk features mm -hmm. or eye thrombotic risk feature or low risk for instant stenosis, namely the patient population in whom you may question the usefulness of a DES because because maybe the instant stenosis is already low in itself or because they cannot tolerate long-term DPT. And indeed, along the same line, another pretty much unique aspect of our study was to ask investigators to comply with DAPT duration in the DES arm, exactly the same duration as in the bare metal stent arm. That's, I would say, probably the most important novelty of our investigation. Okay. My question for you is, um, what do you think is the future direction of dual antiplatelet therapy following PCI research in following the results of this study? This is a great question, and I have to say this is study number two in that topic that I'm uh, chairing. The first one was Prodigy, where we were comparing six months versus 24 months duration after four different stand types. Mm -hmm. This the study that we have presented here at ACC, the zoo study, has a completely different philosophy because we did not want to specifically address the DAPT question, namely we want to incorporate the DAPT duration into a treatment strategy which includes stent and a specific DAPT duration. Okay. Now what is funny, if you look at the guidelines, the guidelines are saying DAPT should be there for at least 12 months, so basically we don't have any upper limit of duration of DPT, and if you look at the way American uh, interventional cardiologists are practicing, actually they maintain DPT almost forever until the patient can tolerate it. <laughs> now, true. if you come to Europe, that's a completely different scenario. We are willing to stop DAPT as soon as possible, simply because this is really something which incredibly affects quality of life of our patients. And actually, the average DAPT duration in our DES patient is six, eight, nine months, not wow. uh, two, three years. So to follow up on your question, I think we should keep on doing good research to understand uh, which one of us is right at the two side of the ocean, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. So my second question is, um, what advice do you have for young fellows like ourselves who are interested in um, dual antiplatelet therapy research? So the advice mm. that I have is probably not entirely politically correct, but the advice I have is do not read the guidelines. First, go back to the original uh, studies that were performed on the APT, scrutinize them as much as you can, and with that background information, go back to the guidelines, and then you will be surprised to see that there is some sort of disconnection between the two.